So uh, I first started getting into public health and platforms in 2011 when I started um, becoming more aware of my own health. I started becoming a runner and I joined Tumblr to document and journal my, um, my own athletic endeavors, which was a very motivating and healthy uh, practice for me. I got a lot of external motivation and validation for my fitness goals. This is me um, uh, after eating four burritos and running one mile in 35 minutes, which is not the healthiest thing to do. Um, and lots of people cheered me on. Um, but <laughs> uh, I, I think I started to notice on Tumblr that there was this kind of like crossover um, between being part of a, a health focused community and another kind of health focused community that was on, on the more negative side, promoting self harm and um, eating disorder. Um, and in fact, um, these communities um, kind of rode this gray area. There was this overlap between a pro health community, um, pro recovery community, and uh, a another kind of community that was more embracing and glorifying of unhealthy behaviors um, and actions using memes and selfies. Um, it got so uh, challenging and difficult for the platform of Tumblr that they instituted a policy prohibiting uh, self-harm content in 2012. And um, when you search for pro self-harm content, it would show you a PSA. Um, now, this isn't the first time that ooh, a platform has had to uh, uh, deal with this. In fact, in 2000, uh, the early 2000s, Yahoo and AOL um, passed uh, prohibition ag against this kind of content. Um, and this is what you see on Instagram today when you surface um, anorexia, it gives you a PSA and also promotes pro-health uh, uh, pro content. Um, so I'm interested in how platforms respond to this issue um, because I feel like you can see a similar dynamic and almost a pattern play out across public health um, as, a, as a whole arena. Uh, for instance, if you look at um, vaccines, um, the measles, uh, Measles was effectively eradicated in the United States in 2000, and uh, we just this year, since the beginning of this year, saw 700 cases reported as of now in 22 states. Um, so it's in part in, due to things like this, these, these memes um, that Nat uh, Guinness and and Jamina call uh, part of a misinfodemic, a spread of a particular health outcome or disease facilitated by viral misinformation. Um, and as with self-harm content, there's a response on platforms. There's the kind of grassroots counter speech from people challenging misinfo or with, uh, with humor. I like this on the, on the right here where the uh, original poster's mom says, no, you are fully vaccinated. This is embarrassing. Um, so there's, there's fun ways to deal with it from a grassroots side. <laughs> um, but then the platforms themselves also uh, take their own approach. There's this kind of de-platforming, banning certain forms of conversation. Um, looking at these types of contents, I feel like we're finding uh, challenging, a challenging as part of a pattern can, can show us why uh, it keeps emerging and how effective our responses are. So um, if you look at this, this graph, you kind of start with um, a, a map of engagement around misinformation, moving down to normalization of the behavior and then eventually extremism. Um, alongside uh, trust of existing institutions. Um, and this maps well to the vaccine case. You start with somebody, maybe a concerned parent who looks at vaccine misinfo and says, oh, I'm concerned for the health of my children. Eventually, as they dive deeper and deeper into the rabbit hole, they um, become uh, resistant and eventually participate in, uh, in misinfo. Um, another way to look at this is uh, some researchers have looked at conversations around vaccines on Facebook, um, and they, they find increasingly kind of nuanced um, motivations for how people are embracing this kind of content. Um, so what should platforms be doing to reduce the spread of harmful information around public health? So I have a few different ideas. Um, basically, I, I think that there should be uh, number one, engaging the public health community, supporting efforts with counter speech, um, and also instituting, uh, use, uh, getting help from the public health community to uh, establish good practices. Um, second, I feel like there, there should be, we should avoid some instincts to uh, look at this as an all or nothing approach. Um, there may be cases where um, the blunt force of banning is a really good idea, and there may be cases where we might benefit better, more from um, intervening in these communities. Um, third, I would also think about every feature on your platform as its own platform. So not just the stream of information on Facebook, but the recommendation algorithms, the um, engagement, the likes, those are all their own little ways of engaging and they can all be used for harm. 
Uh, fourth and finally, I'd also consider the public health approach for all harmful behavior on platforms. So um, think about uh, radicalization and hate speech and dehumanization um, using the same kind of approach. Um, thank you very much. I really appreciate your time. <laughs>